Dave here with Half Dozen Customs. <clears throat> Getting ready to start pulling the front end apart. I'm going to start taking the fenders off and hood off and grill off. And we got to get the radiator drained and we got to get this motor out. So, um, you know, I'm just going to start pulling, pulling some bolts and bagging and tagging everything. And, um, you know, let's see how far we get before lunchtime. So this fender I've had on and off, you know, a dozen times. Uh, so I know, <clears throat> I know everything about this fender. It's easy to pull. The other fender uh, I haven't had off yet. So there's, you know, there's a form mounted to it. There's wiring mounted to it. There's hoses mounted to it. So that fender I expect is gonna. Take me a little longer to pull. Um, for one, and I gotta figure out what everything is and, and bag and tag everything, and then um, I don't know how the bolts are. I don't know how anything's mounted. Um, so I don't know if anything's gonna come out the way that it's supposed to. Stuff's gonna break. I rolled way under the middle of the truck. I think these are the same size. Thought I was grabbing a longer set. Okay. around a little longer.
So right now I'm just pulling um, everything that loops in front of the, uh, the passenger side fender or is connected to the passenger side fender. Um, just to get everything out of my way. make a, a mess of everything. Love making messes. Um, and as I go along, I'm just marking, uh, marking what everything is, where it went. Figures it got fuel lines wrapped around brake lines, so I I have no choice but to pull pull the fuel line a fuel line that didn't need to be pulled. Yeah, it is what it is. Catchphrase. that was going to happen. They just have, uh, you know, old school flathead hardware, <clears throat> and these things are so rusted. Um, I tried to, you know, I tried to get it off, and I'm not about wasting time on on stuff that's never going to get used again. I gave it a shot; it didn't work, so I'll cut it. washer to the antifreeze bucket. bolt spinning down here um, it's right where all the rot is on the lower cab corner um, I don't know if there's a nut and bolt there's a bolt on the inside or if it's just broke and spinny but 
I'm cutting all that out and replacing it like I did on the driver's side, so I'm not worried about this bolt. It's getting cut. to the to the antifreeze bucket See if I can make any sense of this wiring. It went into, see if I can get the white hull pulling this hood off. Um, it's light, I can probably do it myself. Um, but there's no, no sense in uh, damaging anything if I don't have to, so. So I figure while I wait for her, I'll see if I can make sense of this stuff. Okay, so, <clears throat> as you can see from the videos, make sure you're still all recording. You're all recording. Driver's side fender's off, passenger side fender's off. Uh, we took the horn off, we marked those wires. Uh, we disconnected uh, the heater, heater core lines, we marked those. Uh, we drained and removed the radiator. Um, I disconnected all the lights. Um, I just I just cut them. I know that this stuff is not going back in there, but I marked them, labeled them, numbered them. Uh, same thing on this end. So we know where they came from, where they went. Um, like I said, none of this wiring is getting used, but uh, at, at least we kind of, you know, we have a, a, a map to go off of uh, when we go to rewire this stuff. Um, and who knows if any of it was, uh, was even wired up properly. Um, there was wires for this marker light up here that, that were cut previously. You know, I didn't cut them. 
Uh, there was wires on here that were cut previously. I didn't cut them. Um, and I marked all that stuff, like did not cut, didn't do it, did not cut, was already previously cut. Um, so we should be good to go there. Uh, I'm going to pull these two rods off of this grill. Um, and then there's one bolt in the center um, that I, I believe it's a bolt. Uh, I'm not really sure. Um, but. We'll get underneath there and disconnect that, and then the grill will be off. Um, so I'm going to do that right now, and then uh, I think it's lunch break time <clears throat> after that. <coughs> and I'll come back out here later on tonight, uh, and we'll uh, like disconnect the alternator, um, fuel lines. Uh, any other wiring that's going to the motor, like distributor, we got disconnect the exhaust, drive shaft. Um, I got to look into whether or not I got to pull off the headers. Um, if I think that I can nagle this motor out with the headers on then I'll leave I'll leave the headers on um, I'll probably just wrap normally normally I bolt bolt my chain to uh, each uh, to, to the header bolts you know I'll, I'll bolt a chain here and bolt the chain on the other side and then we'll hook in the middle and pull it up um, so if I do end up leaving the, the header bolts on um, I'll probably pull the two center plugs. We'll, we'll mark which ones go where. Uh, I'll pull those two center plugs and we'll wrap a chain around uh, the center header pipes on each side so we can hook and pull it. Uh, I gotta go to, uh, I gotta go up to Harbor Freight uh, this, this weekend coming up here and we'll pick up a, a motor stand. So that I can pop the trains off this thing and put the motor on a stand. But now I'll just leave it swinging from the engine twice, but. mentioned it in other videos or not, but um, I recently purchased um, a 350 small block uh, that I was told was a good motor, but I don't really know anything about it um, for the Monte Carlo. Uh, it's a complete motor. It's sitting on a stand over there next to the Monte Carlo. I was just gonna do a, a, a Craigslist cleanup on it, a Craigslist rebuild, you know, pressure wash it, clean it up, uh, replacing gaskets if need be. I was gonna put a. I was probably gonna do a new carburetor and intake on it, uh, and we were gonna get it all painted and cleaned up, some new valve covers, new air cleaner. Uh, and we were going to put it into my cargo. Um, but I purchased this motor from my buddy. Uh, it runs and drives. I've driven it. Uh, it sounds good. Supposedly it's got a mild cam in it. Um, it's got uh, good carburetor, good intake. Um, there, there isn't really much that I have to do to this one other than clean it up and, and get it painted uh, and put new valve covers and an air cleaner on it. Uh, it's got a turbo, turbo 400 trans, I believe. 
so th this is, I know it runs and drives, I'm just going to clean it up, we're going to drop it right in the mine. So I don't have to mess with that other one. So I think this was a good buy. So that's why I, I'm going to get the engine scan, put it on the engine scan, we'll get it all all pressure washed up and wire reeled and, and we'll, we'll throw a coat of paint on it, we'll get it all cleaned up, make it look pretty. <clears throat> uh, Monte Carlo does run and drive, but it's got the 3.8 V6 in it um, that I know, uh, I know for sure because first car uh, that, that motor with the car. What? So plus how how are you gonna build a hot rod? <clears throat> and you've got a 3.8 V6. be wrong. I think the fenders and these rods just are what holds this grill in place. Let's get something going on there. I think and tagged everything because I'm using the motor. I want to know where everything went, where everything was. Make it easier for him to put the new motor in, make it easier for me to put the motor in the money. I did a little bit off camera, uh, disconnected the alternator, tagged those wires. Um, I undid like the temperature sensor, uh, distributor wires, um, marked all that stuff, uh, disconnected the, the throttle linkage. Um, undid the, the starter solenoid. Um, marked all that stuff, um, got everything, you know, bagged and tagged. Um, 
tagged a, a vacuum line. Undid the, the 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 power cable from the battery. Undid the ground. Um, I moved this uh, this fuel line here. Uh, this fuel line had uh, the whoever installed it or or the brake lines uh, at one point in time uh, they, they actually had this fuel line um, that stays on the motor uh, ran right between the brake lines uh, so I had to disconnect it and untangle it from the brake lines and, and put it back up um, I'm getting ready to uh, pull the fuel line right now uh, for the tank I think I just made sure everything was um, tagged and um, I rolled up most of the stuff over there and zip tied it together and got it off to the side. Um, this stuff I just have uh, taped to the side of the cab over here out of the way. Um, it, it's really quite the spaghetti mess over here. Um, there's melted wires, burnt wires, cut wires. like. I had I have no idea really what they had going on over here, so uh, I just got it taped to the side. Um, like I said, when it, when I reuse this motor, I, it, I'll just rewire everything. It'll get all brand new stuff. Um, and I know that the motor uh, that he's putting in here is all electronic. It's it has its all brand new wiring harness and computer and all that stuff. So uh, so none of this is going to get used. Um, but I've been kind of bagging and tagging everything so that we just have a kind of a, a, a map or a diagram. Should I need to look at something when I go to wire this up, um, I can kind of see like how they had it wired up before. It's just a basic 350, so it's pretty simple. Um, I don't know. I've just always been taught to bag and tag everything, um, just so you know where everything. Um, goes back together so it's just a good habit to get into even though I know I'm not going to use any of the stuff and neither is my buddy um, it's it's still tagged so over a flare then we'll see see if it'll work um, probably not but we'll see That rubber do think he worked. Um, I'm gonna look underneath, see what's going on um, underneath there. Get under the drive shaft, <clears throat> trans mount. Uh, then there's there's two bolts up here for the motor mounts. I'm I'm just gonna pull it. Uh, the the motor mounts actually stay with the truck. Um, I, I gotta do some work on them. They're not the prettiest. Somebody made them, uh, and I'm just gonna make them look a little better. 
um, if I can. Um, but I'm gonna pull it out with the motor and then I'll take it off the motor and we'll put it back in the truck. Uh, it's way easier to just do it that way. So, um, but I think I think that's it. Dry, dry shaft, trans mount, motor mounts, um, and I think that's it. I think every I think I got everything else disconnected and this motor's almost ready to come out. So. Got, I got to undo the exhaust too, which um, real easy. I, he literally just had exhaust put on this thing like two weeks before he dropped it off to me. So um, everything's brand new. So I think I'm gonna I'm gonna start with that. <clears throat> I could bring you guys down there with me. I'm going for a walk. So flip around to the back. Oh, there is a trans cooler under here, so I gotta undo the trans cooler lines too. I seen them, but I was like, they didn't go to the radiator. Where the heck did they go? Now I know. Uh, last night I disconnected the, the trans cooler and I just let that drain overnight. Um, now I'm back out here. I'm going to remove this uh, homemade trans mount, brace, cross member, whatever you want to call it. Um, and it seems like uh, whoever made this, nothing centered. I couldn't get my normal impact sockets in there because uh, the bolt is right up against uh, the side of, of this bar. Uh, only thing that I could get in there was uh, a spark plug socket. So 
Um, I got a wrench, wrench barely in on the top here. Um, I did crank on the bolt and get it to loosen up already. So let's see if we can get this. Let's get this bad boy out of here. And the trans is coming down. I need my jack. I should have known that. Okay, let's try that again. I just got the jack. Um, just up underneath the tail shaft, so I don't want to come down. Got the socket on the first try just by finger in the bolt. That's what she said. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna spin you guys this way a little. I'll meet you on the other side. Hey, I'm back over here now. Okay, so here's what was going on with that. So they had that bolt all the way up against the side of the bar. There was no way to get a wrench on it, a ratchet on it, no nothing. I tried to wedge a screwdriver in between there to stop the bolt from spinning, um, and that wasn't happening. So, um, so I was trying to. Um, fit I was trying to fit a different uh, smaller socket in there just so that I could I was, I was hoping that maybe I could get this in there and I was trying to hit it with the hammer and I hit the flashlight on my downstroke which caused me to smash my finger on the upstroke um, and yeah, when I start hurting myself working on stuff, then, <clears throat> then something needs to change because, because I don't like hurting myself. And I'm sure when this was put in, they probably, they put it, they put it in from the top with, uh, with an air wrench something and they didn't the exhaust wasn't in here when they did it I got the missus out here just in case I needed her help and it's a good thing good thing she's out here. Okay. Trains mount is out. Um I've done a lot off camera. Uh, I put the wheels back on on the passenger side. I moved the jack stands back so I could fit the engine hoist in here. I dug the engine hoist out. I uh, took the rear fender off that I had taken off the other day and we put it back on so we could check 
uh, fitment of the new rims. Uh, so that just had a couple bolts in it, but I had to take it back off. Um, I went and I picked up uh, an intake plate uh, to connect the uh, engine hoist to. Uh, I went and got one just from O'Reilly's. It was like 20 bucks. I figured uh, for for $20, uh, it's about time for me to step up from just using chains. Uh, I've always used chains, never had a problem with them. Uh, but I don't know, it was probably like six months ago, somebody gave me an engine stand uh, and I was putting a motor on the engine stand and the engine stand broke. Uh, the plate that, the, that uh, mounts to the back of the motor um, busted right off of the, the turning Mabob guy. Um, and, and the chain saved me, uh, but that thing went swinging. It, it slammed into the engine hoist and, and slammed back and forth. And, uh, thankfully, you know, nobody was in the way and nobody got hurt. Um, but you know, that, that was just, you know, it was, it was something that happened, uh, that didn't really need to happen. So, um, you know, had I had the engine plate on there, it would have never swung like that. So, uh, so you know, j just safety first. Um, and, you know, for a $20 part, it was time for me to just go get it and do it right. So, uh, we went and got that. So, I pulled the carburetor off. I put that on. Uh, I pulled the distributor out. Um because the distributor was like a quarter inch from the firewall. Uh, right now I have a, a jack underneath the back of the trans holding it up, uh, but as soon as I go to start pulling this thing out, the transmission's gonna have to come down, the motor's gonna have to swing up and out, um, and, I, and I know that it was gonna smash that distributor into the, uh, the firewall, so uh, I removed that just to get it out of the way. Um, and I was just getting ready to roll the engine stand or the engine hoist underneath here and the bumpers in my way. So now I'm going to remove the bumper um, so that I can get the engine hoist back in there and hooked up to the motor. Uh, I still got pulled the two motor mount bolts um, and then this hopefully as long as I didn't miss nothing should come out. So let's get this bumper off. Bolts have seen better days. <clears throat> Okay, we're hooked up. Now it's time to um, pull these two motor mount bolts. Uh, I, I'm there's like a engine cradle that bolts to the frame in here with two bolts, and then and then it, the motor mounts into that. I'm just gonna pull the whole cradle out instead of trying to remove uh, the actual like motor mount bolts. Uh, I'm just gonna pull the cradle bolts and we're gonna pull the cradle out. So. And it, it's still it's still a tight fit in here, even with pulling that bumper off. Um, 
know, I, I bought this engine stand for engine hoist. For one, it was a cheaper one. It's from Harbor Freight. Um, and for two, like the, the weight that it carries, I was like, I'll never lift more than that. So I don't need to get the bigger one. Well, the bigger one would have been way nicer just because it's bigger and longer and fits into areas better. So, you know, if I was gonna suggest anybody buying a, a engine hoist, uh, spend the extra dollars and get the bigger one. Uh, you'll, you'll, you'll thank me later. So, let's see what we can do about pulling these bolts. Um, the bolts down on the bottom uh, underneath here, they're kind of tricky to get to. Um, so I don't, I don't think that these are going to be the easiest, but we'll get them out. boxed frame. Okay, as long as I got uh, as long as I got everything unbolted or I'm unhooked and it should be good to go. for a minute. <laughs> okay, so um, right now it's just draining out of the, the tail shaft of the trains. Um, so, which I kind of figured was gonna happen. I had a pin under there. Um, so we're just gonna wait, let it let it drain a little bit. I'm sure it'll drain a little bit more as we're moving and pulling this thing out, but we're, uh, we're getting there. Okay, we're down to a slow trickle instead of it pouring out, so let's continue moving, moving it out. Low and steady.
Okay, so we got the motor pulled. Uh, my wife was out here helping. Uh, the neighbor came by. Uh, he helped me pull the motor out. Um, then I pulled the two doors off. Uh, driver's side one I've hit off 20 times. Uh, it's got new bolts, new hardware, new everything. Comes off real easy. Passenger side first time I've had that door off. I had to heat and beat um, with the impact driver to get uh, to get the door off. Uh, but the passenger side one came off easier than the driver's side one. Driver's side one uh, did not want to come off. I actually broke a couple. I had to throw them and tap them and all that good stuff. So, uh, but the passenger side door's off. He's gonna, uh, while he's having the motor fitted or whatnot, he's gonna pressure wash down the frame. Uh, at work, he's got a heated pressure washer or whatever that heats up to like 400 degrees. And, uh, so he's gonna pressure wash the whole frame, get that all nice and cleaned up and ready for uh, whatever we're gonna do to a PR-15 or, or whatnot. Um, and then uh, he's gonna have the cab blasted inside and out. Um, so, I did, I, for one, I didn't want the driver's door on, the, on there because the door's done and, and ready to be stripped in and start body working. Um, uh, sandblasting, uh, you know, if, if the person that's doing the sandblasting doesn't, doesn't know what they're doing, they can really destroy the vehicle. So, uh, so I don't want the door getting hurt. Um, I don't know who, who sandblasting it, so I don't want the door getting hurt. Um, the cap, there's not much to it. They're, they're mainly they're going to do the inside of it, um, and then the roof and the back. Um, so, and then he's going to pull the glass before they come and blast it. So, um, so everything should come back with the new motor fitted. The new motor won't be in it, but it'll be fitted and ready to go. Um, and frame should be pressure washed and it should be sandblasted. So. Um, I got a few things, some parts around here that I can work on while it's gone. Um, we're also going to do a little work on the other side of the shop and see if we can uh, maybe make some, some more room, free up some room uh, so I can actually start working on the vehicle that's uh, in the corner under the cover as well. So, um, so yeah, so that, that's it for, for today waiting for them to come get the vehicle uh, we got a lot of cleaning up to do so I'll uh, I'll see you in the next video not sure what the next video is gonna be up but I'll see you then